Hey guys, this is Tyler here right after Christmas. I hope everyone first day had a great Christmas. I sure did. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to everyone about virtual reality and augmented reality and I think the importance it's going to play in our society in the next 10, 20, 100 plus years. Okay, so anyone who doesn't know virtual and augmented reality are technologies that have been around for some time now and they, it's been gradually developing and getting better and better and better it's similar to the way technology with computers email anything in technology how it improves and they build upon the foundation and and it continues to improve and this is the same with vr and ar as it's often known as in terms of how you can use it in your personal life or professional life and also maybe potential business opportunities from this I think are phenomenal. Firstly, I will say, I don't know in all societies and all places if VR and AR will indeed replace, like completely replace what people do in their in their day-to-day -day lives. But I think it will at the very least be complementary to their day-to-day -day life. Now, the biggest reason why I think VR and AR hasn't gain the momentum that some people anticipated by this point is simply that I think it requires too much effort for the average person to be interested and also it just hasn't been widely ad adopted. It hasn't been popularized. It's kind of like computers in the 1990s or even late 80s. They were wrong but they weren't popularized by the masses and I think it's the same thing with AR and VR. Once I think people see the constructiveness in their day-to-day -day lives, I think the mass adaptation will grow tremendously. There are certainly er many areas that I think it's going to become a, um, very prominent in and areas may include engineering and logistics and for aviation pilots or for truck drivers, areas of medicine, among other things. It, law enforcement, military, almost any area in fact. When, when you look at what the technology does and, and how it can be a part of people's lives. It was very interesting when we, we saw this Oculus Rift situation back four or five years ago. People may know this was a company that, a startup company that Facebook actually bought out um, for close to $1 billion and it became kind of a, a branch of Facebook and I think the hype kind of has died a bit with with that company and, and on that area but I, I think there still is a lot of technology and a lot of innovation that's currently happening as I speak in VR and AR. This, as I mentioned, is very widely seen in areas like, in the areas that I mentioned. Areas so that I haven't mentioned are like in dating, in relationships, romance. I think in these areas also it could, could become much bigger. It's already on the market, but I, I think there's still a lot of potential out there, especially when we look at how dating apps impacted the dating marketplace and other technologies and i think the same is true with with ar and vr one thing that vr and ar has going in the area of romance is that unlike with dating apps i think most people can actually benefit here it, it doesn't just benefit a small spectrum of the people with that would cause people to go back and continue using it, that whole product consumer cycle. And, and that's why I said, from the business perspective, I think much bigger potential. It, whether you're producing like perhaps hardware, it could even be software, membership-based program, you, you could certainly get people coming back over and over because if they were feeling that it actually benefited or they enjoyed it, they would probably come back. And that's obviously what we're seeing right now with dating apps. Unlike five years ago, a lot of people will not resubscribe. When you look at like Tinder and Baidu, people are done. They're not going back to these apps. And many people will only use the free versions. They will not use the upgraded versions of these apps because people don't feel like it's doing much for them. Whereas with, with VR and AR, it's so early on that um, there still are many fields out there where there's still innovation to be had and there's still a lot of market potential. There, there's a lot of market that you could still capture. If, if you start your own business, own company in this area, you would you'd be able to have a big chunk of 
that given area that you're aiming for. And I know, for example, in the company I used to work for, UPS, logistics company, this was an area they were really looking into and they were, in fact, investing in. It, it was an area that um, in both the VR and AR, UPS had both bought a startup and they also were self-funding their own projects because UPS has a big innovation wing of the company and this was an area that they were certainly looking ahead with. Same is true in all the other areas of life that this can be applied to. And when you look at what it does, it, it essentially simulates a real life environment. You can see why it can basically be applied to almost any area. If you, you can simulate an environment, that, that's what it basically is about. And I think that's one of the reasons why if you look within the relationship romance area, it's very pop. The, the, the notion and the ideal, it gets a lot of visibility and people have a lot of interest. And I think there are still are like many concepts in this area that people could start businesses or companies in. You could say, use this to simulate some kind of dating situation, dating environment, like going on like a virtual date and kind of use it as a way to write it yourself. If you were one that wanted to use it more supplementary, you could supplement this and then use it before going on a date or being in a relationship scenario in practicing in this environment and then in real life. Obviously with how everything's became, it's very competitive in a sense with relationships and dating. And this is a way that you essentially could practice and you'd have a better idea of how to do stuff because you essentially, you would be practicing it. There's other obviously areas you could certainly use it like in bedroom situations. This. VR and AR I think is also being, there's experimentation with tying it to like these bedroom robots we'll say. Essentially like scientists are researching kind of how to put these two together to have kind of a simulated environment with the like the bedroom robot or just the bedroom robot of course or intimate robot. But th there's a lot of potential in this area. Like I said too, if you're a business person or you, you desire to be one, there's a lot of market in this. I mean, when, when people people look at like startup options, potential, what type of businesses are out there? Like typically, if people inquire to me, I would say like the top areas where I think there's still a lot of potential is within like the med medicine slash biochemistry slash biosciences, that this area. And then also within like augmented virtual reality, robotics, th this is another area. I think robotics is more, it, there's been a lot more work done, but augmented reality and VR, not as much so. And a lot of that, the VR and AR is more software driven, of course. So there's a lot of specialty in this field. I think people, if you don't have like, a AI or machine learning background, or you don't have someone with that kind of programming background, you'd certainly need to find someone who could, who, who understood this because creating st simulated environments through computer programs, it, it requires very high expertise, like coding skills, and also just understanding like how um, machine learning is integrated into this. It's, it's a very sophisticated area, but there's a lot of potential here and, and if you niche in on the right areas specific areas especially where there's demands the sky's the limit in terms of business potential i mean you you can be one of the only players in that area for so long and th there's a wide open market like i said people may look at this in a more negative light but just remember that at least initially, I think it's just going to be more supplementary. You don't need to use it. Just like when people would practice on driving simulators for when they were learning how to drive. Same thing with a VR or AR environment. And in a sense, these kind of arcade games were kind of the predecessor to the VR and AR technology and innovation that's currently happening. And it, it, it's kind of the same scenario, but in other areas. And I know it's also being used like in different areas of medicine and cancer research. They're, they're using it or surgery operations. They're finding ways that it can be used. People who have lost limbs, amputees, th this is another area. There's been a lot of integration and in, in research to, to help develop the science and 
in medicine in this particular area. And like I said, within relationships, dating, intimacy in the bedroom, mega potential. I mean, it, even with what are, is already on the market, there's probably 10 times more potential out there. So if look at what, areas where there's potential and, and, and dial in on one. That's the main thing. Always focus on a niche. Don't try to focus on the broad market. You get enough of a niche, then you can branch into other areas. And this is the same with, this isn't any area of business, but especially with in, in VR or AR, you really want to niche, on, niche in on a certain industry and just really hammer down at it and get really good at one thing. And then from there you can grow. But if, if anyone has any ideas here, please share them. And I look forward to your comments below. Thank you.